Hey everyone, it's low carb and keto nutrition specialist Amy Berger bringing you the one and only Keto Without the Crazy. I've got quite a spicy topic today, so it'll be interesting to see if there's a mass exodus from the channel or if I get lots of people unsubscribing. Hopefully instead there'll just be some supportive comments, but time will tell, right? I do some coaching for a private membership in which from time to time we get a request from someone who asks us for information you know links to studies or links to videos you know information that they can share with someone in their life who has expressed concern over some aspect of this person's diet and and when i say diet i mean keto or carnivore or low carb that thing, the, the, some, some flavor of carbohydrate restriction, as I typically say. And we can certainly provide that. You know, in this membership, I'm more than happy to provide links to published papers or, you know, videos from medical or nutrition professionals who I think are legit. I can certainly provide that evidence for this person to give to this concerned you know, acquaintance or relative, but <clears throat> so much to unpack here. The first thing that I want to say, because some of you out there have probably been in this situation where someone in your life, be it a spouse, maybe your parent, your child, a sibling, a coworker, your, some bro at the gym, some girl at the gym, whatever, somebody that you come across in your life is worried about you because maybe they're worried that you're eating more red meat or that you're eating a lot of saturated fat or that you're not eating a lot of vegetables, that you're eating a very low fiber diet, whatever it may be. All of a sudden, they are very concerned about you and or they eat in a very different way and they've kind of, you know, nudging you toward eating that way. And the first point I want to make, and probably the most important, is you are never ever under any obligation to justify or explain your diet to anyone. Period, end of story. Now, you may want to justify and explain. So, you know, as I always say, stick a pin. I will try to remember to come back to that. There, there may be a time and a rationale for explaining yourself, but you are never actually required to do so. The end. You get to do what you want to do with your diet. You are never obligated to make someone else feel better about what you're eating and not eating. It just isn't a thing. Like you never have to justify what you choose to eat or not eat. I could end the video here, but you know, less than four minutes in, Amy Berger, clearly I'm not capable of making a video that short. And there are some other important points that I want to address, but you could end the whole conversation there. You never need to explain, period, done. Another interesting aspect of this is I have never, ever understood why grown adults are so concerned over what other grown adults put in their mouth. Get your heads out of the gutter, but you know what I mean. Why is this even a thing? Why is it so controversial or so fraught, such a heated topic, what people eat or don't eat? There are so many other aspects of life where this sort of debate and need to justify or someone requesting that you justify or defend your choices. There's so many places where this would never come up. And I will give you at least two examples. First one, well, I think three. First one, let's say your favorite color is blue 
you wear a lot of blue, you just like it, you, you think you look good in it, it's, you just like blue. Your best friend happens to like red. Their favorite color is red. Have they ever said to you, why are you wearing so much blue? Uh, you shouldn't wear so much blue. Didn't you know red is a better color? Why don't you wear red? This, this would never even come up. It would never even be a topic for discussion. It just would never, nobody would dream of, of wasting air on that conversation, right? Or if you did, you would not, you would not feel threatened. You would not feel personally attacked if somebody said, wow, you seem to wear a lot of blue. I don't really like blue. You would just say, oh, well, blue's my favorite color, so I just wear a lot of blue. You know, you do you, I'll do me. I like blue. It wouldn't be this sort of personal attack on your, your self-identity, your self-image. You'd be like, all right, you like red, I like blue. We can still be friends, thank goodness we can hold different opinions and still like and respect each other and get along. Same thing with those of you who are parents. If, um, you know, some of you may have a very hands-off type parenting style, they call it free range parenting, you know, where your kids are just kind of outside playing and maybe they don't have phones, so you're not tracking their every movement, you don't know where they are every millisecond of the day and you don't have every, hour of their day scheduled to the hilt with activities, you're kind of like, let them be kids. And then maybe your brother or sister or your cousin or your coworker has a very, very different parenting style. They are much, much more heavily involved. You might call them helicopter parents or whatever. They are just, they micromanage their kids' activities a lot more. Is someone right? Is someone wrong? It's just a different style. And I don't know that that person would say to you, oh my gosh, you just let your kids run all over the place. You should parent the way I parent. You, you, you should do things the way I think are best. This wouldn't even be a conversation to begin with. So why is it a conversation when we choose to eat very differently? It doesn't have to be a big deal at all unless you let it become one. Um, and, you know, if, if someone did say something to you, again, you, you might feel a little attacked, but you would, you, you probably wouldn't feel a need to justify or to present evidence in your defense of how you raise your kids. You would just say, this is, this is what I think is best for my kids and this is what I'm doing. And, and I'll give you one more example, and this is where I said it would get a little spicy. Adult humans sometimes engage in physical activities of a sexual nature, and most of us have our preferred methods for engaging in adult physical sexual behavior, right? I mean, we all have the things we like a little better than other things, and we have things we don't like so much. I can't speak for anyone else, but in my life, and I'm assuming a lot of your lives, it's not a topic of intense debate or conversation. You, you never, nobody would ever say, oh, you like to do it that way, that's your preferred method, well, you should do it this way, or that's a dumb way, or don't do it that way because of X reasons. You would never ever have to justify to someone else why you like what you like and why you do what you do. Now, you know, assuming you and your partner have agreed and everybody's consenting, all good. Or, you know, you and yourself, it's all good. I don't care what you do, it's, everybody's consenting. But the, this is just not even a discussion topic. It, it, it just wouldn't even come up. And again, if it did, you would just kind of laugh it off and dismiss it. Listen, I do what I like, I do what feels best to me, you do the same. We can have wildly different opinions, wildly different preferences, and still like and respect each other. And, and no one has to make the other feel less than, no one has to ask the other to justify what they do or defend what they do. And yet, this very clear, very obvious, almost laughable thing falls apart when we talk about food. All of a sudden, everybody's so concerned about your health. And 
I guess I said, I said, you know, stick a pin, I would come back to discuss that there, there could be a time and place to, to defend. Um, I will say that anyone who loves you and cares about you, be it, you know, a relative, your spouse, uh, even, even a, 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 just a friend, a coworker, someone who cares about you and presumably wants you to stay alive for a long time and be healthy and be vibrant and, and, and live, you know, enjoy life. They actually do have a vested interest in your health, not necessarily in what you eat to accomplish that health. But if, if they think that there are certain foods or certain behaviors that are roadblocking your health or, or you know, potentially putting your health at risk, then they actually do have a rationale, excuse me, <coughs> getting over a cough. They actually do have a rationale for speaking up and expressing concern. Um, and many of you actually might find yourselves in this situation. Maybe you have lost five or 20 or a hundred pounds on keto. Maybe you've reversed your diabetes. Maybe you are off your blood pressure medicine. Maybe your heartburn is gone and your migraines are gone and you want your spouse or your sibling or your parent or your coworker to experience this magical life-changing transformative keto and they don't want to hear it. So like you can understand that you actually do care about and have a vested interest in someone else's health and quality of life, potentially via what they eat. So there, you can understand why somebody might bring this up, whereas they might not care if you wear the color blue or that you raise your kids a certain way, you know, but when it comes to something like health, they might feel like they are more justified in saying something to you. So we can acknowledge that and still also say that we're not obligated to justify. They can be concerned. It's still not your obligation or requirement to assuage or soothe their concern. They can just be concerned. And people are allowed to be wrong. You don't have to correct everybody. It's okay to let people just be wrong, right? Like if, if they think red meat is killing you or they think saturated fat is bad for cardiovascular health, they're allowed to just be wrong. You don't have to waste time and effort setting the record straight for them. You just don't. There's um, a comic, the, those of you that know the comic XKCD, I'll see if I can find a link to it and put it in the notes. There was a comic once of some guy you know, tapping away furiously at the computer and his wife comes into the room and says something like, you know, it's 2 a.m. or something, aren't you to come to bed? And he said, I can't, somebody is wrong on the internet. Like, like arguing with strangers over the internet about keto. Now, maybe arguing with someone in your personal circle is different from that, but you know what I mean? The sentiment of that is like, you're allowed to just let people be wrong. You just ought, you know, I, I don't feel the need to always correct somebody who's saying something incorrect about physiology or metabolism, whatever. They're allowed to be wrong. Um, okay. Other aspects that I think are worth covering in a video about this topic. Even if you do take the time to print out some clinical trials and or print out some studies or get links to videos from trusted professionals or you know, find find the data supporting your point of view or supporting your your diet i'm gonna let you in on a little secret they don't care they are probably not actually going to read it they don't actually want the data they don't actually want four studies printed out from pubmed to read they don't want to watch Dr. So-and-so's deep dive into the biochemistry. They do not care. If you honestly think they do care, if you think they are genuinely interested and really want to learn, not just prove you wrong, not just kind of poke the hornet's nest like, hey, do you think you should be eating so much red meat or shouldn't you be eating a lot more vegetables? Don't you need more fiber? If you 
if they're not just being that sort of nasty kind of commentator, if, if you really think they genuinely want to learn, then you can say something more like, oh, I, I'm so glad you're interested. I actually have a lot to say on this topic. I found like this huge, this treasure trove of awesome information about it that makes me really confident about what I'm doing. Let's get together sometime next week, next month. Let's look at our calendars. Let's get a day and time on the schedule to sit down and look at this stuff together. Very few people are gonna take you up on that little offer. They just don't care. Most of us think other people care about what we eat so much more than they actually care. I mean, I hate to burst your bubble, but maybe that's a relief. Because if you know that they're flapping their gums, they're making all kinds of comments, at the end of the day, they don't actually want to hear any rebuttals. They don't want to hear your defense. They don't care. All right, last point I wanna make. If somebody does care, like I said earlier, some people might, if it is your spouse or your parent or your child or your coworker, boss, it's any, somebody meaningful in your life, you know, assuming your coworkers are meaningful for you. <laughs> All of a sudden, you started a keto diet or a carnivore diet or a low carb diet and alarm bells went off in their head. Suddenly they're very concerned about your health. Great. Awesome. How fortunate are you to have people in your life that care and that want to see you healthy and vibrant and thriving? Where was their concern 10 years ago when you started needing insulin injections for your type 2 diabetes? Where were they four years ago when you were popping antacid medication like candy? Where was your coworkers' concern for your health? <coughs> Excuse me, getting over the cough. Where was their concern for your health when somebody was bringing donuts to the office every other day and you grabbed one or two and they never said a word about that? They can't have it both ways. You know, no, nobody expressed concern for your health when you pardon me for being a little bit extreme, but when you were killing yourself with your fork, when you were digging your own grave with your fork and knife, where was their concern back then? Where was their concern for your health when they saw you at the lunch hour pop, you know, with your pill box, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, each one full of eight different prescriptions. But stop eating whole grains, stop eating fruit, and all of a sudden, uh, there's sirens going off and they're just so worried about you and your health. So, like I said, I mean, when this question comes up in that membership that I coach with, I can provide the information. And if somebody really wants it, I will. I will provide some studies. I will send links to, you know, I think what, what is legitimate, in, you know, credible information. But I just about always start off by saying, I'll send this if you want, but the easiest way to deal with this situation is to simply drop it and let it go because you don't need to prove this person wrong. You don't need to defend or justify your keto or carnivore or low carb diet. You just don't. And that it's, it's a slightly uncomfortable type of feeling because some of you watching this are probably not accustomed to giving yourself permission to tell someone to just buzz off. You, you probably feel like if someone asks you something, you have to answer. Guess what? You don't. And if you're not clear on that, watch my very recent video I did on people pleasing and, you know, the end of people pleasing. <laughs> so, 
goodness, this cough. Um, yeah, so it, it can feel uncomfortable if you are not used to just saying, sorry, not going to engage in the conversation. But it can also, you know, on the other side, it can be very liberating and very freeing and very lightening, like an unburdening of this sort of like burden obligation that you had previously felt to justify and, and prove everybody wrong. How freeing. Oh, I don't, I'm doing what I'm doing. It, it, it's, it's the best I've ever felt. I know that this way of eating works best for me, or at least it works best for me right now. It's helped me lose X amount of weight. I'm off this number of medications, whatever it may be. I love it. I like it. I know it's safe. Therefore I'm doing it. And it really doesn't matter what various and sundry folk in my life have to say about it. All right. Thank you for watching. Until next time, keep the crazy out of your keto. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, you know what to do. Hit, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell if there's still a bell so that you get notified if I have a new video so you don't miss anything. And I will see you next time.